What's up, YouTube? So, I'm going to be talking about this uh, Chase Claypool trade. I'm sure we all are aware. Uh, I didn't get a chance to talk about this yesterday. I didn't have time. Um, so, I'm going to do it this morning. Um, not mad at it. I think it is definitely a low-risk, high-reward situation, um, which is always fun to have. Um, we acquired him from the Bears for our sixth-round pick, and we got a seventh in Chase Claypool back in return. Um, so I'm okay with that. We're getting him for not much at all. He's actually still in his rookie deal. Um, so if it doesn't work out, we can just cut him. He, he's only going to be costing us about $2 million this year. Um, so there, there's really no risk there. Uh, I know he's been kind of a locker room problem, both in Pittsburgh and in Chicago. Um, at least in Pittsburgh, more toward the end. But maybe a different environment with a winning team. Because when the Steelers were winning... He was pretty damn good. He had two straight years with 800 yards. Uh, his first year with Ben Roethlisberger, he had over 800 yards and six touchdowns. Actually, I think it was nine. Yeah, it was nine touchdowns. Um, and then his second year, he had about another 850 yards and I think two touchdowns. So, I mean, his first two years with Ben Roethlisberger on a successful team uh, where he didn't have to be the guy, uh, where he wasn't expected to be the guy, he did pretty damn well, and he definitely doesn't have to be the guy here. I mean, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, and Braxton Berrios, I feel like have already kind of locked up their roles on this offense, obviously, especially the first two. Um, but I do think he brings something else to the table. And also, in Pittsburgh, he was a good blocker. Um, with the Bears, there definitely was some effort concerns, but I'm hoping a different environment with a winning team that is hopefully going to utilize this guy properly. Hopefully that can help motivate him. Because um, if, if we can get anything close to what he looked like as a rookie, this is going to be looking like a fantastic trade because he brings something to the table that our receiving room does not have. I'm going to list off the weights of our receivers besides Chase Claypool, and then I'll talk about Claypool's size. Braxton Berrios... 5'9", 190 pounds. Robbie Chosen, 6'3", but 185 pounds. River Craycraft, who's injured, um, probably going to be out for quite a few weeks. 6'198 pounds. Daywood Davis on the practice squad, 6'1", 196 pounds. Eric Izukanma, also injured, 6'2", 206 pounds. He's the biggest receiver that is probably ever actually going to play because we do have a practice squad guy that's bigger. Um, Tyreek Hill, 5'10", 191. Braylon Sanders, 6'1", 190. Freddie Swain, 6'2", 202. Jalen Waddle, 5'10", 182. Uh, Relia Webb, 6'2", 212 pounds, but he's probably never actually going to play for us. Cedric Wilson, 6'2", 197 pounds. So the point is, out of all the receivers that are ever actually going to touch the field, we have some pretty small receivers. Like Eric Izukanma was seen as our more physical receiver. Same with River Craycraft, even though he's not that big either. Uh, they both felt like our physical threats just because, you know, by default. Uh, same with actually Tyree Kill because he's kind of short and stocky. But Chase Claypool is 6'4", almost 240. And he's not slow either. Um, he's not a great route runner and he doesn't create a whole lot of separation. But just running vertically, he's not slow by any means. Um... And he is a really solid contested catch guy, and he can run you over. And if you look at the way the 49ers kind of use Debo Samuel, I'm not comparing the two players at all, but I think you can line this guy up in the backfield and just let him be 6'4", 240 pounds, and let him run people over. I think that's definitely something you can do. And then, you know, in red zone jump ball situations, like, I mean, we, we tried to throw a jump ball to Braxton Berrios. By default. I mean, he's 5'9", 190 pounds. We, we now have a 6'4", 240 pound receiver that can get those attempts instead. Um, so I'm not mad at that. Um, because I remember, you know, because our, our tight end room it isn't full of, like, major receiving threats. You know, uh, Julian Hill, Tyler Croft, Durham Smythe. They're all solid blockers, and, and they give you a little bit of value in the receiving game. But I remember in preseason and in training camp, we were talking about guys like Eric Izukanma potentially replacing the snaps that Mike Kosicki used to give us. But Eric Izukanma 
like I just said, is still only 6'2", 206, and he's injured. Now we actually have a guy almost as big as Mike Kosicki at wide receiver. Um, so I think he can kind of carve out a similar role. Um, am I expecting him to have 800 yards? Absolutely not. I don't think he needs to. He's our fourth receiving option, our fourth wide receiver option. Because, I mean, our running backs, both Mostert and A-Chain, uh, they're both great receiving threats. If Savan Ahmed ever touches a football on this team again, he can be a receiving threat. Um, our tight ends, Durham Smythe, he's pretty consistent at the very least. Uh, he So, honestly, Chase Claypool doesn't have to be a star. Um, and I, I realized that with the Bears, he wasn't, he didn't really seem interested in blocking anymore, but when he was a stealer, he definitely showed the ability. So like I said, I'm hoping that, you know, a new environment will help with that. And also one of the other effort concerns with him was if even on a passing play, if it's a play where he knows he's not getting the ball, his effort was pretty low. Again, I'm hoping a better environment will help with that, but also I don't think his snap count has to be super high. I don't. Um, so I don't think that's going to be as big of a concern. Because he is probably going to be our fourth wide receiver. And we're giving up a six-round pick. But And you also got to think about it. Like The Bears just traded a second-round pick to get him last year. Like When he was a Steeler, he was a damn good player. Um, and with the Steelers, as far as... Like, toxicity? Really, he was just a young kid interested in social media. That's that's really what it was. It wasn't really major effort concerns on the field. Um, that really happened in Chicago. And honestly, Chicago looks like such a dumpster fire. I'd want out too, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but that's just me. That's just me. But anyway, now, and, and like I said... Even if this doesn't work, because this is my thing, if it works out and we can get anything close to where he was as a Steeler for the remainder of the year, he's going to help this receiver room a lot because he gives us something we don't have. But if it doesn't work out, we're, we gave up a six-round pick at a seventh in return. That's not really much. It's $2 million, and like I said, it's the last year of his rookie deal, so... If it doesn't work out after this year, we just let him walk. No harm, no foul. So it's a low-risk, high-reward situation for, in, in my eyes. Um, and also, if he can return to form <laughs> to how he looked in his rookie year, he might be the fourth receiver right now, but he could definitely impede on Braxton Berrios, which, I again, I don't mind that idea because Braxton Berrios is kind of a similar type of receiver as Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. He's just not as good as them. He's more of the small, shifty, speedy guy. And having that big-ass receiver that, that can be a contested catch guy, I think that can help you a lot. And also, Claypool can get yak too. He's not going to get it through speed and shiftiness. Uh, like I said, he can move in a straight line pretty decently. And moving at 240 pounds with that kind of speed, you'd be surprised what happens when you can make contact with somebody. You can run somebody the fuck over for sure. Um, so, there's that. But, anyway, that's going to do it for this video. If you liked it, appreciate hitting that like button. If you have any questions or comments, in the comments down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.